What's up, everyone? It is Monday, July 8th, 2019. And we are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by the lovely Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. This is episode number 606. Allegedly. I was just told by this piece of paper. <laughs> that's important information. So we had to get someone really special. Who's here today, Beth? Eric Bergen is here Woo! from Waitress, my favorite OBGYN on Broadway. Cute. <laughs> He's also on TV, Madam Secretary. That's true. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. This is a return engagement to the Broadway hit Waitress. I can't wait to uh, say hi to him, but first, today's top five. And we got some sad news about leaving Rodeo Drive. Baby. This, oh, Sorry. Oh, okay. So this <laughs> is Sorry. some catch-up news after the long holiday weekend. Pretty woman. Yeah, this is a sort of a catch-up news It's a catch-up news session. If you've been sort of like... You know, Out of town, yeah, celebrating yeah, like Independence us, yeah. Day. We're going to have a catch-up sesh. Uh, Pretty Woman has announced its closing date on Broadway at the Nederlander Theater. It will play its final performance on August 18th. Sad news there. Um, August is turning into a lot of, a lot of closings in August. It's, it's, yeah. it's a little depressing. Um, it began previews last July, mm -hmm. so it's had a year on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It will... At the time of its closing, we'll have played 27 previews and 421 regular performances. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Of course, this stars Andy Carl and Samantha Barks, along with Tony nominee Orfe, Charlie Pollock, who was recently here, and Eric Anderson, and Jillian Mueller and Brennan Hunt will take over the roles of Vivian and Edward from Samantha Barks and Andy Carl on July 22nd. Right. So they, they get to do it for a month. Correct. Yes. There you go. Okay. That's the news. And we have spent the day honoring and remembering the creator of Annie. I mean, Annie. Would I even be here if it wasn't for Annie? No, none of us would be. No. That's correct. Come on. Martin Sharnan, the super talented, Tony-winning creator of Annie, uh, died at the age of 84 on July 6th in White Plains. Uh, he had a heart attack. And um, he, of course, created, so he conceived He conceived Annie, and directed and wrote the lyrics. And wrote the lyrics. Wow. Uh, Along with course, Charles Strauss Annie and Thomas Meehan. got to Broadway in 1977. He worked on it for a few years before that. Uh, big part of his life. Mm -hmm. He also did the 1993 sequel, Annie Warbucks, which I randomly love. I which love was Annie. off Broadway. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it was supposed to be on Broadway as Annie to Miss Hannigan's Revenge, and then it became off Broadway. Annie Warbucks. It's a long, Correct. It's a long yeah, story. That's right. um, he also wrote and directed uh, Bar Mitzvah Boy, I Remember Mama, The Mad Woman of Central Park West, La Strada, The First, uh, a lot of shows. He won three Emmy Awards. Yes. Uh, for Annie, The Woman in the Life of a Man, starring Anne Bancroft, and S Wonderful, Marvelous. Skirshwin. Okay. Skirshwin. Love it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that one, but it starred Jack Lemmon and Fred Astaire in 1972. Um, he's survived by his wife, Shelley Birch, who is a former Annie. Is she? Yeah. Uh, and two children, Randy and Sasha, and mm. three grandchildren. Uh, he lived a wonderful, fabulous life, and come on, Annie, greatest musical ever. True. And this Broadway hit is going from Jeremy to Jelani. This was rather surprising news. So two-time Tony nominee Jeremy Pope is leaving the Temptations oh. musical Ain't Too Proud. Actually, he just left yesterday. Right. Mm -hmm. Starting it tomorrow. It was quick. It's very quick. It was like, you know. It's very quick for a Tony nominee to leave a there recently. There are rumors that maybe he there like, are rumors booked that a job or something, a, but, but that's he's correct, no but longer we in the show. We haven't confirmed that. Uh, Jelani Remy, former vlogger Jelani Remy. Yes, we love Jelani Remy. We'll take over the role of he's been, Eddie he's Kendricks. He's been a standby he's at been the show. Yeah. with the show for yeah. a while. And so this is a little switcheroo in the casting of The Temptations. Mm -hmm. But they're in good hands. They're in very good hands. And there's a lot of switching in The Temptations if you see the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. It fits the theme. It fits the theme very well. <laughs> and congratulations are in order because the ferryman had an excellent final harvest. So, yeah, so yesterday was what the final performances of The Ferryman and My Fair no, Lady. My Fair Lady. I and believe ink. they both closed. And uh, ink. Yesterday, and it's ink. a summer of closings. Sorry. It often is, so though. I'm not trying to add a theme to this. It's also the summer of Milan Rouge coming, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and Eric Bergen back in. Uh, <laughs> oh, he what, just, the, he just perked anyway, up over there. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, The Ferryman it recouped, we found out yeah. after it closed. Um, we're, no one is surprised by this news. I'm that a little surprised. It's got 21 people in the cast geese, rabbits. Babies. Babies. But Beth, it's been a sensation it has since been. it opened. But that's a lot of and people in the company. And how much were they really paying those babies? I don't know. 
I, I guess how, I equity guess babies. Minimum, is there a different equity babies? Equity babies. Yeah, they're equity cot. Is that a different contract? Do they sign the contract? <laughs> and what about the uh, rabbit? Their equity cot is like a baby. Anyway, baby. it's a. It was a big hit. We can now say it's past tense. Although it will be a national tour, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. For the 2020-21 season, more in, wow. info to come. So anyway, it made its money back. I wasn't worried about them. And we are so excited about this casting for the upcoming live action Little Mermaid movie. Like I said, it's a catch up sesh. Yeah. So you already know you this, but we're just going to tell you again. again. It's sort of all over the place. So, Halle Bailey has been cast as Ariel in the live action I don't know Little her. Mermaid. She's Grammy oh, she's nominee great. for Chloe and Halle with her mm-hmm. sister. Mm-hmm. They're, they call Rhymes with Halle Berry, but it's Rhyme, Halle yeah. Bailey. It rhymes, it's not related <laughs> in any way at all. Um, <laughs> So there you go. And they are known as protégés of Beyonce, but aren't we all? Um, so <laughs> Eric Bergen is. Here's the best part about this. Do you know who has put her stamp of approval on this casting? That's right, Sierra Boggess. Oh, I saw that, yeah. She said she's here for it, and we all are. So congratulations to Halle Bailey. Yeah, there were people, people, some people reacted in a ridiculous way to this casting. She's I a mermaid. Love it. It's not a real Disney thing. Disney has always been in the forefront with diversity That's in right. casting. Look at all their Broadway shows, and I love that these live action, I mean, by the way. Yes, go on. You know, the live action Aladdin, which I caught up with during oh, Catch Up Sesh. I caught up with it. I really enjoyed it. It is the number two movie musical of all time now. Mm. It almost has a billion dollars in worldwide. And what's number one? Receipt Beauty and the Beast. So Little Mermaid will clearly be in the top. Three. This Definitely. is just what's happening with these things. So, Absolutely. congratulations, Holly. You're going to be in a big hit. Yay. And Lin Manuel Miranda is uh, working on it, right? Rob Marshall's directing it, Lin Manuel Miranda, yeah, gonna, and Alan is, this Mankin. Is, this is so good. Okay, so, we have a couple of other things on the site we could talk yeah. about. Mm-hmm. We have like a what? fresh face, don't we, Caitlin? You want to yes. tell us about our fresh face? With Miss Jenna Claire Mason herself, the new Glinda. We did it. It was awesome. She's the best. She saw Wicked when she was a kid and decided what she wanted to do with her life. Full bubble, full circle. <laughs> also, we have our first. Vlog from James Snyder, the star of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I always feel like I should say Harry Potter. Hey, kid. He, he's a former vlogger. He's current, a, former. A former and current. Future. The once and future vlogger. James Snyder. It's called Magic To Do. He's got all kinds of bits and tricks because and things and magic. Pippin and reference. No. Well, he sings well. it for a second. Anyway, check that out. I'm going to get out of the way because Eric Bergen is here. Thank you, Beth. Caitlin. Tell everyone about Mr. Bergen. Gladly. Yes, we have Eric Bergen here with us in the studio today because he is currently playing Dr. Pomodor once again in the hit musical Waitress. He made his Broadway debut in this role this time last year, but you may know him from his many uh, appearances in Jersey Boys or, you know, this small, amazing show called Madam Secretary. Go watch it if you haven't. Be sure to follow him on social media at Eric Bergen, and please leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Eric and Paul. Hello, Eric Bergen. Hi. Thank you, Caitlin. I love your hair. Thank you. I love your <laughs> hair. I love your hair, too. It's so My good. hair is very large right now. Yeah, it's very large. Yeah, yeah. Humidity hair. Yeah, it's the last day before a haircut. <laughs> oh, got well, it. Well, this okay. is really about you. Okay, fine. Because you're back on Broadway. Yes, uh, in Annie. If, <laughs> Did I get that wrong? Future, future role. Yeah. Uh, Daddy Warbucks, would you shave your head for that? <laughs> for the right Annie. For the right Annie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, you. Uh, it's. It was so strange last year when you made your official Broadway debut in Waitress because we all sort of thought of you as a Broadway veteran. Me too. But it turns out. <laughs> it turns out, <laughs> it turns out I'm not. not. You've never actually done it. No. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I certainly and, thought it. And it went well. It did. Apparently, they asked me back. They asked you back. Yes, that's nice. Yeah, it was great. I mean, that that show is. um, It's. It's. I I can't. Every single night, um, it's amazing to me, especially because there's so many repeat people that come to the show. Well, because they keep bringing interesting casting. They do, and I I find that people bring come back and bring family members. So. uh, Here we are, another year into the run of this show. Obviously, there were two years before I, I even joined it. Uh, and it's just packed every night, so I'm I'm thrilled, and it's a, a blast to do. And last summer I got to do it with Cat McPhee, and this time around Shoshana Bean. Yeah. Which to hear, you know, to have Shoshana Bean Bean sing at you is is, is it quite a lot? A, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, you know, she's such a brilliant singer that I don't even want to sing. I just want to kind of listen right. half the time. Right. Um, and we've been friends for a long time, so. Yeah, it's been it's great to see uh, all the different women who've gotten to play this yeah. role over the over the, the yeah. Broadway run. It is. I mean, I got to see a lot of them. I saw it out of town at uh, ART when it first uh, started, and I think I've seen almost all of the 
uh, Jesse Jennings, Mueller did it Jesse in Mueller air, too, and yeah. and uh, Betsy Wolf and yeah. Nicolette Robinson and and uh, yeah and Kat McPhee and and now and yeah. Allison Luff is is uh, uh, coming in and yeah. all of that yeah yeah she's fantastic yeah. too. So you saw it at ART. I did. Because yeah. you're just... Because I'm you're friends a... with Drew Galing, who originated ah. the role of Dr. Pomander. Yes. Uh, and uh, friends with uh, Jesse and... and uh, uh, because we all thought you were on Broadway previously, so you have all Broadway friends. Turns right, exactly. Out imposter. Turns out I'm an imposter. Yes, I am only. This is the one show I'll ever do. I'm, not, I'm only allowed to do waitress. That's it. Yeah, you're, um, legit. you're legit now. I'm a, I have a legit Broadway credit. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and two, maybe even. And actually, can you count a return to a show sure. as to a second I don't credit? Know. Sure. <laughs> okay. Whatever you want. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but so, is there anything different about it this time? Obviously, you do the summer. Well, you have a TV. So, Madam Secretary. Yes. Uh, are you done with it? No, we're going into our sixth and final season. So you uh, haven't filmed it yet. We haven't filmed it yet. No, oh, okay. I, we, I close Waitress on uh, July twenty first, and I start Madam Secretary July twenty second. Oh. Yeah. Now, last year I did it at the same time for the yeah. second half of my run, and I was filming from five in the morning. You know, and all day, and then running to the theater. And how was that, that night? Um, I was tired. I'm still catching up on it. It was scary only when, um, like, I filmed right up until about five thirty, and had to be there for a seven o'clock curtain. Is trying to get from Greenpoint, Brooklyn, across the bridge in that traffic at that mm. time of day. That was scary. You know, mm -hmm. getting to the theater. One time, I got to the theater at six fifty eight. Wow. Something like that. Yeah, it was a little, little close. Again, shock they brought For me back. For a seven o'clock show? Correct. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, Dr. Pometer uh, has about 20 minutes until he goes on. Right. Uh, and I had a full face of TV makeup, so I was already ready. I just did like, you know, this to my hair, threw on a lab coat, and I was ready to go. Is TV makeup <laughs> uh, the same as Broadway makeup? No, no. TV makeup is about, especially when you've been filming all day, it's about three inches thick. Okay. And um, <laughs> there's, you know, all these tricks to make you look like the best version of yourself. Mm. And Broadway is just kind of like, uh, I think I look fine. Yep, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you ever see, you ever walk around Times Square, like around, uh, like after a Saturday matinee or a Wednesday matinee, and you yeah. see, like, you know, like uh, the dancer girls yeah, in I there. Love that. I it's love the best the thing. They wear their the hat, the sh the yeah, hat the over hat. the wig cap and just full on, like, why are you wearing, oh, you're in a show. Got it. <laughs> so I know you grew up in New York City. Yeah. Um, I want to hear about that. I grew up in Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea. On, yeah, on 20th and uh, 7th. I uh, okay. went to New York City uh, public school my whole life. Um, Broadway was kind of in my, my backyard. What and did your parents do? My parents were, um, they, they were not in the arts per se, okay. but they met kind of doing acting class. My dad had a cabaret act at the duplex. <gasps> I don't want to talk about it. What? I know. And um, my mother was But you obviously didn't see. No, I didn't has, see it. Has no, no, he no. ever recreated it? I mean, I know some of the, I have some of the charts, funny enough. Yeah, he opened with. Uh, Wouldn't it be great? Remember how like Leslie Kritzer recreated Pat Lapone's act at you Lamouche? Should, yeah, you should do. I love it. You're like a real theater nerd. <laughs> I'm a real theater nerd. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good with recreating my dad's cabaret act. Thanks. <laughs> However, I do know that he opened with uh, "Everybody Says Don't" and then went into Barry Manilow's "Even Now." From Sondheim to Manilow. That's right. Not that much of a difference. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, they did that. My mom was in the fashion world, um, oh. uh, do, did a lot of art direction for catalogs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dad was in various businesses. And um, uh, I'm kind of an equal product of both of them. And, and music was very much in the house. And, um, and I saw my first Broadway show and then went to Big. Uh, Big was my first Broadway Oh, you've yeah. done your research. I yeah. did my research. That's I watched right. the other Live at Five you were on. <laughs> <laughs> did, we, did I talk about Big at the other? Dad. Oh, God. You talked about seeing kids because Big crossed the line. Remember that number? That was such a great number. Oh, my gosh. With little Spencer Liff. Now, little uh, Spencer Liff. Yes. Yeah. Every time I'm with Spencer, that's what I, I mentioned that to him. <laughs> I mentioned that I remember him as little Spencer Liff. Well, what I think is interesting is, you know, when I see my friends now, the people who choose to raise children in New York City, yeah. it's interesting. It takes a certain kind of uh, parent to want to raise their child in Manhattan? Well, I think it's very different now. I mean, at that point, it was it, you could afford to raise a child yeah. in New York City. It gets, yeah. a little, it gets a little scary now, the idea of doing mm -hmm. that. But it's still an amazing place to grow up. It's an amazing place to raise a child, mostly because of the amount of um, uh, arts that are around and things like that. I think if you raise a child in the suburbs, you know, it's like, it ends up like that Euphoria show on HBO, which is, you know, <laughs> say, sorry. That's just my fear. Right. Did, did I cross the line? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we are not. Mm. 
Uh, and so now I know you, you're very New York based, right? Madam Secretary Films here. Yeah, we're over in uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and uh, a little bit in Queens. We feel we're a made in New York show, so whatever yeah. we need, like, yeah. you know, another country, we find it in Brooklyn, or Russia is usually Long Island. And uh, uh, yeah, and we're finishing up this year. We're gonna, we'll be done by, uh, I think, the first week of November. So how do you like feel that. emotionally entering the last season? <laughs> well, I'm. I'm ready because I'm ready to do the next thing. I'm mm -hmm. ready to move on. It's definitely bittersweet. Um, I uh, six years of a TV show. I mean, I, I'm the luckiest kid in the world. That the idea of that is is crazy to me. Um, but I'm ready. I'm. I think we've told the story that we aim to tell, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think we're finishing uh, finishing it out the way that. Um, is best for the characters and best for the story and I think trying to push it or have it become some kind of you know long-running procedural just for the sake of it becoming long-running is mm -hmm. um, uh, not the best for the show so I think ending it this way is, is kind of perfect so you know what's happening have you have the script only a little no I don't even have the script yet okay. oh I know only a little bit just the general like idea of how they're going to structure the mm -hmm. series because she did resign as the Secretary right. of State at the end of last season. Right. But I don't know any specifics. I, I, you know, they always, they always are trying to get us to sing because there's so many musical theater yeah. people on the show. So I have this uh, fear that Blake, my character, is going to end up with a cabaret act at the duplex. So <laughs> there's always that. <laughs> It'll be the perfect way. It'll be end. like you know they want to keep bringing the the Marilyn Monroe smash show to Broadway. Mm -hmm. It'll be like that. It'll mm -hmm. be the uh, you know the uh, show within a show. Uh huh. I love, I love that. that. So what do you Pretty want good. the next thing to be? Well, uh, I'm working on a couple of new things. I'm I'm working on uh, this new Broadway project that we're we're just beginning um, uh, uh, about the uh, the life of uh, Halston, the fashion designer. Oh, right. Um, yes, that's, yes, that's yes. That's just in the beginning stages. And then there's a couple of TV things. It, the problem is it's all about timing, and everything is just about exactly when it ends. And, and at some point, I have to... You know, like enjoy the holidays or take a break at mm -hmm. some point. I don't really want to, but they tell me I should. Yeah, a little break. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little break, but not long. But Halston's interesting. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. It's brand. I mean, we're just in the beginning stages, but um, it's very exciting. The that idea. means that, that means someone will have to play Liza, <laughs> correct? You can have the job, Paul. You don't have to. Play. <laughs> no, I just, it's, it's interesting. You, you have the hair. You're ready to go. Just put it that way, and you'll be good. No, it's we're we're uh, we're we're excited, and and you know, in a decade from now, when we're on Broadway, well, I'll come back here and promote yeah. it. Great. Yeah. And I'll watch this one to yeah. research. Um, exactly. So, uh, what's it like over at Waitress? Because you know, in a, a long-running show, I, 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 that company especially, I hear great things about sort of oh, yeah. the energy backstage and the people, and it's a really sort of loving atmosphere. And I think Sarah Bareilles sort of inspires a lot of that, don't it, you think? Absolutely, and I think having the band on stage, yeah. um, it's a lot of the same musicians from day mm -hmm. one, from the out-of-town tryout. There is this kind of diner hangout mentality that happens mm. backstage too. It doesn't have the, the, the pizzazz of a lot of shows. It actually, it, it, it brings you in a completely different way. People really feel like they know these people in the show, whether they're sitting in a booth in the back or whatever. Um, there's a real homegrown quality to uh, this show that is definitely true mm -hmm. backstage. Um, uh, and, and the greatest crew, and these people have been there since the beginning. And I think, uh, you know, the show has been around, how long has it been, four years now? Probably three years, something three. like that? A long time. A long time. And I think how many shows have come and gone in right. that time, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's not just because it happens to be a good show with some good songs. It's because it's, it's um, a great group of people. And right now you have just great hilarious people. You have Ben Thompson, you have Noah Galvin, and you have, mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, and Shoshana, and it's just, um, and, and Caitlin. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm very, very lucky, and that's why I went back, because it was such an easy, I, I, I would have gone back in a heartbeat, so when I was asked to go back and it worked out with the dates, I was there in a second. Right. Yeah. Um, can you do a good Clint Eastwood impersonation? <laughs> I know you do a good. Yeah, Paul leave Lind. the chair and I'll see your Paul Lind. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. No one watching even knows who Paul Lind is. No but one. Look it up. It's no good. one. I, I <laughs> tried to sneak one on Madam Secretary once, 
and uh, don't think it made it past the uh, the, uh, <laughs> the studio edit. But you, but Clint Eastwood, you actually worked with him. You were in the Jersey Boys yes. film, and I'm sure people ask you about him all the time because yeah. he's an icon. And he you is. got to spend time with an icon. Yeah, he 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 taught me. The, I think one of the greatest things um, ever about how to run anything, um, especially creatively, which is hire the best people and then let them do their job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he's kind of the essential non micromanager mm. um, and it's weird that movie you know when it came out it, it, it didn't do so well at the box office and then it kept having the pause you, you've actually I saw you say that um, tens of people <laughs> tens of right exactly that, tens of people enjoyed, enjoyed the film right. well I enjoyed it and you were fantastic at thank that. you but what has happened is is that it's had a, such a second life on HBO right. and Netflix now <laughs> yeah um, that it, it's 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 uh, more and more people are watching this movie and, and enjoying it. So I, it's it's had this great life. I'm very thrilled to be attached to it. Do you find that I find that theater people hate watch when there's m movies made of Broadway musicals? Uh -huh. Do you find that sometimes like they, they kind of like go into it? They're like excited. We all get excited when they talk about the casting. Right. Like Little Mermaid, <laughs> yay, yay! It's gonna be great. The prom, yay! Well, and I then they go see it and they're like. Really? Well, As a movie. right. <laughs> I never quite got the hate watch thing. I mean, I've I've seen things that I've watched and hated. You've hated. <laughs> yes, but I I can't You're say a hate that watcher. I've yeah yeah yeah. But I can't say that I've like I don't know. It's thrilling for that person, and it's someone's enjoying it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made it. I mean, there. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm always sensitive to that because I know that if I was in it, I would yeah. have been thrilled. That doesn't mean that. You know, I haven't had a party or two at my apartment where I've invited people over to <laughs> hate watch things that they want. I'm not saying that, um, but uh, I, do I think that they people hate watch that movie? Sure, sure. But you know what? They watched it, and I got a residual. So yes. continue to hate watch. I just think it's interesting over time how that all sort of evens out. And you're right. Oh yeah. The legacy of a movie actually Absolutely. years from now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I can't. I. I, I hate watching. We gotta. Mm, it's not. It's not my cup of tea. I've yeah. done it. I don't want to do it anymore. In today's world, let's stop. Let's, <laughs> unless let's you're cut gonna, down on the hate watching. Unless, I do think we need to bring back um, booing publicly. <laughs> like at shows. Yeah. Like I do. Broadway? Yeah, I do. Like, like after a bad note? Yeah. Or, like a, or, if I, if I, or if a joke didn't get a laugh? Yes. Or if you like yes. slip a paper, that, yes. that thing where you yes. have to do that routine with yes. the paper, that bit? Yes, yes. I think Booing? We, well, I just think... You're, you're open to audiences not booing me. you? Not me. Oh. No, I just, think, I just think, you know, we had this the other day because it was like, you know, if an audience didn't laugh at a joke, um, uh, and, and, you know, I'll look at someone else on stage like... What happened? Why didn't they find that funny or something? Wrong? I just think, tell us. Tell us what mm. you didn't, what we didn't get. Tell us what we boo. did wrong. Just boo. They don't do it at the fruit, film festival. Boo. No, no, no. We don't want to make it violent, but you know, maybe make yourself known. I just think it would be fun like the old days. You know what I think is interesting? <laughs> Whenever I see shows out away from Broadway, like yes. even community theater, yeah. I, I recently saw a, a, a fantastic Mamma Mia up in the Catskills. Yeah. And outside of Was New it York, at stage nobody Romana? stands. No, 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 no. And no. on Broadway, you guys have it so easy because they all think <laughs> yes. this is part of the thing. Everyone yes. gets up immediately. They don't right? do it in London, though. They're not a. They're not a. London audiences don't stand like just immediately. That's you why so many Broadway stars have never played London. <laughs> is that why they're not ready yes. for that? They're not ready for it. So, yes. so maybe people, maybe booing, not standing. <laughs> is this, is this what we're suggesting? No, Broadway is a place of love. No, it is a place of love. I just, you know, there's certain times where you'll say a joke. You're like, I did it like that the night before. Why is it not working today? Just tell us what's wrong. Did you not find it funny? <laughs> is it not funny? Was it something I said? Or, or, or maybe, maybe they don't... a talk back. Yes, yes. Like, just let's, let's evaluate my performance. <laughs> matinee crowd. <laughs> exactly. No, or matinees. You say matinee crowd? No, yeah. matinees are the best. Oh, really? Oh, for our show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They love it. Oh, they love it. <laughs> They love. I, I I am so excited. I was so dreading the idea when uh, when I did the show of of, of doing matinees, uh -huh. and singing at that time of day. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do it. And then do a waitress. Oh, that's our. Those are our crowds. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best time to go is a oh. Wednesday matinee. Oh, yeah. That is a Take hot crowd. Work I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm for real. That's the hottest crowd. Yeah. Wow. It's, like, it's like when, you know, the midnight shows that they do for, yeah. for like, Broadway Cares. Yeah. Yeah. It's like our matinee crowd. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> That's a good tip. I'm gonna I'm gonna come see you. Absolutely, waitress afternoon <laughs> instead of after dark. 
Uh, Caitlin, yes. I'm, I've been hogging our guest. Uh, do the fans have anything to add to There's this? There's so many questions. <laughs> there are so many questions right now. Um, okay, but the first we'll take is Juan wants to know if you could get the chance to play any other character in Waitress. Who would it we be? Did, didn't, and this why? question came up on the last live. Oh, oh really? Because I watched the last live. Oh. <laughs> Did I did I say Becky? I don't know. Sure. I just think I just <laughs> love Becky. that song. But I play. I would. I would, Becky, Becky or oh, Old Joe. Joe. Becky is adventurous. Oh, Old Joe. Well, yes. You can you can do that role later on too. Yeah, I just like it because there's he gets to sit down. Joe. <laughs> old Joe is also a, a gender fluid role. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Take no. it from an old man. Yeah. 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 Anyone can. Yeah. Yeah. Joe with an E or without or was she Joe or I think I it was J O. Oh, old I think she was Joe. Old Joe. Yeah. Right. Old Lady okay. Joe. <laughs> Any fresh questions, Kate? Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> oh, man. I don't like that. <laughs> That's not fun. See? You're enjoying I'm it. I'm into it. I'm so into it. You guys it. are enjoying it. I wish I could anonymously boo, though. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, you can't. I don't want people yeah. to tweet no, about Paul it. Paul can't boo. Um, <laughs> Alex, this might be a fresh question. I don't know. Sure. Alexandra wants to know, what's the best bad idea you've ever had? That's fresh. <laughs> um, rated fresh. fresh. Rated Run fresh. Tomatoes. What is the best <laughs> bad idea I ever had? Thinking that I could be Billy Crocker and anything goes when I said so I said yes to when I did the national tour and and Are I you terrible? No, I was fine. I just they didn't change I I, I expected that Kathleen Marshall was going to like make the dance work for me cuz you know she had put it, she had built it on Colin Donnell who's this brilliant yes. dancer. And and she just kept saying, "Nope, you'll. We're gonna make it. We're gonna. We're gonna do it." I said, "Okay, I'll get there." Whatever. I didn't. I. Who was I, your Reno Sweeney? Uh, Rachel York. Oh, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. Yeah. I love doing that show. I mean, it was a thrill. But that was it. Was a bad idea for me to think, "Oh, I can do this," because <laughs> I couldn't. How was your "You're the Top"? It was great. We had a, we. I mean, that. Once I learned the lyrics to You're the Top. That's, that's what I was going to say. Did you ever screw those up? Oh, yeah. Did you ever hear the Barbra Streisand, Ryan O'Neill version? From What's Up, Doc? Yeah. Yeah, of course, where she's on top that's of the piano. That's my recording of it, because there's not one of yours. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but uh, they I'll added get, lyrics. I'll get on that. She added lyrics, Barbra Streisand. Bergen sings Broadway. So you didn't write any uh, specific jokes for Rachel York? No, <laughs> but you know, the, the trick with You're the Top is, if the problem is, if one person goes up... It the whole thing is ruined. Mm -hmm. So you can't if one person screws up their lyrics, you're kind of what did they just say? And then right. you can't. You're the same. Me the same. I mean, you're screwed. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks for bringing me back, though. Someone has to be the bottom. Great. <laughs> so um, wow. What you know? Speaking of your, uh, I like those songs that you made. Thank you. One of them was uh, the reason why you, you. One of them was the, well, one of them. You were running by a bunch of Broadway people. In the <laughs> yes, video. Nico Lanzaroni and Ben Thompson. Yes, yeah. running through the yeah. night. Yeah, <laughs> which was fun. Yes. It was yes. Like who's he running by? Right. Yep. Uh, and Jelani. Jelani yeah, is yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at it. Linked to the news. That's we right. See. Look at that. Uh, That's right. And then the other uh, song was like a, a sexy. It was like oh, a, better in the dark. Yes. Oh, come on, because you hear better in the dark. Is what you said. Because I Not the lyrics. Uh, 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 I I hear better. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. The, yeah. You don't know the lyrics. Well, I wrote them so long ago. I don't know. It's not like I've been on tour recently anyway, doing they're them. Very good. They're very yeah. good. I hope you make more music. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Do you want to? I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a true labor of love. Um, but it's, uh, you know, that's, that you have to be in that headspace. You know, I'm not one of these just kind of like, oh, I have an idea, when to do it. I'm like, I'm going into write or I'm going into do yeah. this. And yeah, but I'll get back to it. Yeah, I'll they're get back great. To it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anything else, Caitlin, in closing? Yes, let's do one last song. This is an Ooh, easy, whatever more. first comes to your mind. Colleen wants to know, what is your go to karaoke song? Ah. Oh, oh. Um, I hate karaoke, oh. but <laughs> if I loved it, it would be well the song that I'll, the song that I when I sit down at a piano, the one is is Walking in Memphis. That's my that's my go to piano song. I really despise karaoke. I don't get it. You want to give us a little of uh, Walking in Memphis? <laughs> do you do the Cher version is, or the? Well, strangely, Cher sings it higher than the original key. <laughs> I don't know why that That's is. Really you, you know, she's, you expect it to be, but she took it up a, a step. <laughs> I'm just upset it's not in the share show. Um, uh, uh, no, I don't want to say Walking Man because it's my day off. <laughs> no, I, was, I wasn't really expecting you to. No. Can I give a plug, though? 
because I have some concerts oh, yeah, coming totally. up. I allowed to. We're here yes. for plugs. Okay. I don't know what I was going to plug. Oh, I'm uh, performing at th- this great new performing arts center in Avenel, New Jersey, that oh. I'm doing uh, two concerts at in, on uh, August 18th, the Avenel Performing Arts Center. Ave- oh, <laughs> it's a catchy name. Yes. And then I know where Avenel is. You do? Far. Yeah. Do you I've know how to get there? I've driven through it. Will you give me directions? Because <laughs> I have no clue how to get there. <laughs> and then I'm most excited. I'm, I'm um, performing my debut with the Boston Pops Ooh. this year. I know. Fancy. August 11th in Cape Cod. Fancy. Wow. I know. Cape Cod. I know. It's an outdoor concert. I hope it doesn't get rained out and ruin so my dreams. So what do you wear to an outdoor Pops concert? Is it linen? A yeah, like a linen tux. Okay. I don't know what you... I, I'm yeah, going to sweat through whatever it is anyway. You always look sharp. Thank That's you right. for being better dressed than I am. I'm not used to interviewing people wearing something more dressed up than me. So very thank fancy. you for that. This in is the summer. Fancy. This is In very, the summer. You have a, a great... This is... This is very nice, David I have to Korn's say. designed it. We is like it really? To, we yeah. like to plug him as often as we can. Yes. You should rent out the set late at night to, you know, things that need... What's happening late I'm at like night? Like the Robin Bird show, if she wants to come back. <laughs> that was a big part of my upbringing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> growing up in New York? Growing up in Manhattan. That's and I'm right. sure you stumbled on Channel 35 often. <laughs> um. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Eric Bergen. On that note. You're delightful. <laughs> Hey everyone, go see this guy as as uh, the, your favorite OBGYN. It's Shoshana Bean's OBGYN. You don't know the name of the character, do you? Tometer. Okay, good. I was just making sure. But I think it's more fun to say Shoshana Bean's OBGYN. OBGYN. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, at uh, what through the twenty first. Through the twenty first. Yeah. So that's yeah. two more weeks. Two two weeks. Yeah. Two more full weeks. Yeah. I'm gonna go on a Wednesday matinee. Hello. I'm gonna bring the booze. <laughs> yes. And they're gonna bring the booze. The audience. <laughs> I don't know why are they so late. Wow, that was good. I don't know. I don't that's, know. that's fun crowd. <laughs> are we okay. still on? <laughs> Enough. Yes. I don't know. We can talk forever, <laughs> but we're gonna go. Uh, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day uh, here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Isabel McCalla of The Prom.